Welcome to the 1990 Freedom Bowl postgame show here on KPTV. I'm Mike O'Brien along with Phil Cassidy and a disappointed group of Oregon Ducks who unfortunately had to be the team coming up on the short end of an entertaining and exciting Freedom Bowl game. An ex excellent fourth quarter, a lot of close plays in the end. Musgrave almost gets in for the touchdown. They finally get it. They go for the two-point conversion. They're stopped short. They, they hope to win the game in the last minute, but it just didn't happen for them. Well, the Ducks, of course, uh, thrilled to be in a bowl game for a second straight year. And the people in Fort Collins, Colorado, remember, yeah. they've torn down a couple sets of goalposts this year. <laughs> and there might be a few people at the stadium back there doing it again oh, tonight. They're still up right now, Michael. <laughs> but uh, this is a real big boost for their program. They go to a bowl game. They're successful. And they're in the Southern California area. Whoever's up there, you know, potential recruits, you know, they might like to go to their to that program right now. Well, the people at Colorado State that were here in the game, they didn't uh, match Oregon's fans in numbers, but they were really shaking the stadium. <laughs> Phil and I were up in the press box, and when they took the lead in the fourth quarter and then extended it on that long run by Todd Yurt, the fullback, yeah. The press box was rocking, and I thought I was at the World Series. I was going for the elevator. I thought the uh, seismologists were probably going off in Colorado, and they were looking at those things probably going 4.1, 4.2, and it was going up as the uh, press box started to move around. It was pretty scary there for a minute. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, again, for Duck fans back in Oregon watching a, a comeback that comes just inches short from a victory, but it was a kind of a magical drive downfield engineered by Mill Musgrave, and we were both down on the sidelines right near the end zone, and we watched the entire drive from field level, and you just had the feeling the Ducks would score, and we also had the feeling they'd make the two-point conversion. It was pretty exciting, and Musgrave, he kind of went airborne, and looked like he got in, but he didn't, and then uh, McClellan came up short on that two-point conversion, but you have to give Colorado State's defense a lot of credit, especially in the second half. They were aggressive, they really came to play, they, they put pressure on Musgrave, they were really tough up front, and I don't think the Ducks offensive line pr played that well in the second half. That's right, Phil. And uh, again, going back to the two-point conversion at the end of the game where the Ducks tried to win it, Rich Brooks always goes for the victory, and he did it again tonight with a minute to go. And McClellan was open, and I don't know what kind of a replay you had at home because we were down here on the field, but we were right in front of the play. McClellan was running toward us, and he was in the end zone moving back toward the one-yard line. And when he actually caught the pass, it looked like his left foot was in the end zone, but the rest of his body and the ball were just outside, and he was hit the ball never did cross the plane and back judge Gene Steratur in the timeout after that told us that that was his ruling that the ball was not across the plane and from our vantage point it did look to be a good call. The Ducks will probably be a little shocked because they saw it from across the field but when they take a look at the film they'll know McClellan wasn't in the end zone for the conversion. So the Ducks come up just inches short of evening their bowl record at four and four. It all started back in 1917 and now after eight bowl games the Ducks are three and five and they'll end this uh, 1990 football season with an eight and four record. Well, we do have uh, highlights from tonight's game. Colorado State winning it once again, 32-31 the final. And let's go now to our highlights starting from the first half of play tonight. We have them back uh, in our truck and it was a uh, Colorado State coming out with some big third down plays, Phil. Kevin Verdugo, very uh, effective early on third down. Boy, they switch quarterbacks a lot, and Verdugo was really productive in the uh, the early going. That's Doug Lindner on the, uh, or Linder on the catch there. It breaks tackles as a 12-yard gain. Later in the same drive, third down play, and again, Linder this time to Greg Primus, who would loom large later, and that led to a keeper by Jimenez on third and goal, and it was uh, Colorado State in the lead, 7 to nothing. Now, Oregon never did run the ball tonight. The uh, longest gain from scrimmage, I think, that they had was nine yards by Musgrave on the first play. But, boy, Musgrave was hot with the pass. Yeah, great pass right here. This is Burwell making the catch and going for big yards, Mike. And then it's the uh, touchdown, Musgrave to a wide open Anthony Jones. The first career touchdown for A.J. And for Musgrave, that was career touchdown number 58. It put him over 8,000 yards in his career and tied the game at seven. Later, Musgrave gets hit and launches a perfect pass. Here is McClellan again, and they were kind of the storyline offensively, and that set up uh, Greg McCallum from a, uh, for a short field goal try. And McCallum, just a junior and an excellent field goal kicker, one of the most accurate kickers to ever play the game, and the Ducks led here. 10 to 7, but CSU yeah. would bounce back. Big mistake here, uh, Brian Brown. Uh, I don't know, did he ever get uh, get a handle on this thing? It, it looked like he looked away kind of upfield, and Colorado State was right there to recover it, and that was a big play because the Rams capitalized. Uh, second and eight play here. Brian Copeland uh, gets CSU going with a big 22-yard run, a pitch over the right side. Copeland had a really good game, especially in the late going, and uh, first and goal from the nine-yard line. Tony Alford, who comes back uh, healthy 
for a game finally. He breaks tackles and gets close. And then third and goal, Todd Yurt gets into the end zone. He's 6-1 from Mission Viejo, California. Pretty close to this area. Yurt with a touchdown, and Colorado stayed up 14-10, Mike. So the, the fumble really changed momentum, but then Musgrave brings it back. Beautiful catch here by Vince Ferry. That was on a third and three, and that keeps the drive alive. And then Musgrave to Joe Reitzig, and Reitzig was clutch down the stretch in the touchdown drive, which gave Oregon a chance to win. This play uh, was a big gain for 22 yards, and it sets up a, a third and goal play. Musgrave to Sean Burwell in for the score, and at halftime, the Ducks led it 17-14. That play coming there with 23 seconds to go in the half. Third quarter play there, and, and it was kind of a kind of a comedy of errors and good defense. It was really hard to really figure this out. You could analyze it any way. Uh, and here is Burwell with the ball. Look at him try to get away, and he, the ball hits his knee, and he just kind of gives up and says, wow, I lost it. And Colorado State recovers, and they're in business, Mike. One of the few uh, big uh, runs they had, and they lose it, but Eric Castle looms large on the very next play. Plays a free safety like a free safety <laughs> shoot. Really and intercepts the uh, long pass, and that uh, sets up the Ducks. But Oregon's offense just really having trouble. Here is Musgrave just getting sacked, and the Oregon ability or inability to run the football really hurts. And uh, here a collision, yeah. and uh, Oregon just very fortunate they were lucky. that they did not give up a touchdown as uh, it was Bud Bowie with the recovery, and it was a safety, and the Ducks trailed 17 to 16 at that point. Now, uh, Oregon did get uh, one more bad break as Tommy Thompson, a punter, was ruled down as he tried to punt the ball. He, he had a, a low knee snap. down. Yeah. They had punted the ball. It was The ball never really got to him, and he didn't really uh, have time to think. He just, like, reacted, picked the ball up, and put a knee down. The official was right there. Kind of a strange call. You hardly ever see that, but the official was right on top of it. But you really have to give Colorado State a lot of credit, especially against Bill Musgrave in the second half. They pressured him in the second half. They changed up their defense a little bit. They started out in kind of a, a man look and backed up into his zone. I think that might have confused them a little bit. Well, then Oregon defense, uh, Oregon mistakes rather, really uh, hurt them. The Ducks gave up just five yards in the third quarter, and still Colorado State scored five points because of the Duck mistakes, and that really was telling tonight. We'll be back with more from the Freedom Bowl postgame show when we come back to Anaheim Stadium in just a minute. We ask. Mike O'Brien, Phil Cassidy back at Anaheim Stadium where the 1990 Freedom Bowl is over. The Oregon Ducks have falling short against Colorado State 32 to 31 final. Now, head coach Rich Brooks right now has closed the Oregon locker room. He's talking to his team, and we hope to have some interviews for you uh, within a few minutes. Uh, but the Ducks, I know, and Rich Brooks, very emotional when right. he loses uh, uh, his seniors for the last time, and he's going to be saying goodbye to a, a lot of seniors, Bill Musgrave, and a whole bunch of them who have done a lot for the program here. I'm sure he's very proud of his team. They did play well tonight, but they just kind of fell apart in that third quarter. I think I think he has to look at the way his, his young people played and go from there and, and be encouraged about that next year, I think. That's right. The defense especially loses just two starters, and all nine of those players will be back. They played a, a very good second half, save for two big plays, the long touchdown pass and then the long run by Yurt. But they really were keeping uh, Oregon in the game while the offense was sputtering around there in the third quarter. So we... A lot of people got their hands on the ball in this game. Uh, Musgrave was able to, to pass around. McClellan got the ball. Burwell and, you know, Ferry also got the ball. He caught the touchdown pass against UCLA this year. And I think I think that was a, a real good a good sign for the Ducks tonight, but it just they didn't get enough of it in the second half. Let's go to some highlights now that we have from late in the ballgame. Fourth quarter highlights now as uh, Oregon and Colorado State played a dandy of a ballgame. Here's a third and eight play. Musgrave with a beautiful juke and then a pass to Joe Reitzig, a 17-yard gain. And that keeps Oregon in business, makes it first down Ducks. And then it's Musgrave and Michael McClellan, 44 yards. What a game McClellan had. Well, he was over 140 yards in uh, pass receiving. If there's any NFL scouts in the stands, Mike, I'm sure they took notice of Michael McClellan. He's a good one. Well, he's not real big, but he is certainly... Uh, very, very uh, fast and, and effective. Now, on the two-point conversion, Musgrave by in time, looking, no one open, no one open, and then looks back left and lofts a beautiful pass to Burwell, and that's good for the uh, two-point conversion, and the Ducks with a six-point lead, and that loomed large. That two-point conversion play there kept the Ducks with a chance to win it late in the game. Yeah, and, and you know they made the decision there to go for it, and they were going to go for the win all the way down the line. It was a good decision by Rich Brooks. But CSU comes right back. Jimenez to Greg Primus. Uh, Eric Castle, the sophomore from Lebanon, may have taken a bad angle on the defense and Primus goes all the way in 49 yards and then Burwell later as the Ducks are in field goal range is stripped by Eric uh, Tipiconic who recovers the football and the Ducks were in range of McCallum that could have given them 
a one-point lead. And Colorado State takes advantage as a yurt, Todd Yurt, playing in front of his hometown fans. He's an Orange County yep. kid from nearby Mission Viejo. He goes 52 yards. I didn't think we'd see the big fullback go all the way. Boy, a couple of big plays in the second half for Colorado State. 52 yards on that play, 4.59 to go. Uh, the, the PAT was blocked. It was 32-25, Colorado State in the lead. And there was plenty of time left, and you thought that the Ducks would have a chance, with, especially with Musgrave at quarterback. Mark. That's right. Well, the block kick was big. The Ducks held their composure. They blocked the kick, which gives them a chance to perhaps, perhaps win the game. It's third and long. Musgrave's been sacked, and he goes back to pass. And who does he find? Joe Reitzig, who, along with Scott Boatwright, have played incredibly well this year despite injuries. And Reitzig uh, comes back to make a great play, 31 yards. Then it's Musgrave trying to keep he leaps up and is just inches short he looks at the official he's right by us and says come on play. i was up high enough you got to give it to me yeah. but it wasn't good and this time the ducks go to burwell he's fumbled twice but the ducks have confidence in the freshman and burwell makes good burwell uh, he played great in spots he just couldn't hang on to the football if he did it might have been a different outcome mike and then the game riding on the two-point attempt the pass from uh, musgrave to McClellan is complete, but uh, Michael McClellan just, the ball is just inches from crossing the front plane of that white stripe, and that's what it has to be in in order for the, con the uh, conversion to be good, and a couple of inches are what separate the Ducks from uh, victory instead of defeat here in the Freedom Bowl. I think if McClellan drove his defender a little deeper and then came back to get the ball, he might have scored it. He did catch it. He could have brought it over the line. It just didn't work out. Musgrave didn't have a whole lot of time either. That's right. We'll be back with more from the Freedom Bowl postgame show when we come back to Anaheim in just a minute. Back at Anaheim Stadium, where Colorado State has defeated the Oregon Ducks, 32-31 the final. And with us now is the Ducks offensive coordinator, Mike Bellotti. Uh, Mike, what's the mood of the team and uh, in the locker room now? Well, I think quite a bit disappointed. You know, we did not play a very good football game, I think, as well as we're capable of. And Colorado State played a very good football game. And it was great for the fans. I think we just came on the wrong end of the score, unfortunately. You had trouble running the football today. Did that surprise you? Not really. Colorado State has been a good football team against the run all year long. I thought we'd be able to run better. Uh, they shut us down, and, you know, because of that, we could throw the ball, but uh, it was enough. I, I would like to have run the ball better. A lot of penalties tonight. A little bit out of sync with that layoff, you think? Or? Well, very uncharacteristic. You know, we were the least penalized team in the nation, and we did not show up that way today. I, you know, maybe the out of sync thing, you know, maybe the we haven't ever had this much time off, you know, in which to practice and come back for a game, and, and we weren't as sharp as we needed to be. You were spreading the ball around early. A lot of people got their hands on the football. Did you think you could continue that on the rest of the game? It sure looked that way. Well, we, th we thought that we needed to. We got good production from most people. You know, I, Sean Burwell has been a very able ball carrier all year long. To have him stripped as he was a couple times hurt us because those were on basically running plays that had gone very well to that point and would have gone further. I, those things uh, haven't occurred, and, and unfortunately he was maybe a little rusty too from the layoff. Mike, uh, your comments on Bill Musgrave, a, a remarkable performance, I thought, especially in light of the fact that the Ducks never could establish the running game, and yet he was just brilliant. Bill's a tremendous player. Bill finished a winner even though we as a team did not. And, I mean, he's a, he's a great young man. He handled pressure today. He came up with big plays repeatedly. And he kept us in the ball game. And, uh, you know, I'm just it's been a joy to coach him. I'm very excited for his future in football. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming by. Uh, good luck. I mean, thank you. Congratulations, I guess, what I'm trying to say on a great season. And uh, best wishes uh, next year as well. Well, thank you. Thanks, Mike. That's Mike Velotti, offensive coordinator of uh, the Oregon Ducks, who come up just a, a point short tonight, 32-31 here at the Freedom Bowl. You have to be uh, pretty excited about the game. It was, it was a good game. We saw a good football game. You, you wish the Ducks would have won it, but uh, it didn't work out that way. Colorado State uh, prevails in the end, 32-31. to don't have any uh, final stats right now. We we're trying to get some. Uh, Bill Musgrave, though, we do know, has completed uh, 60 touchdown passes in his career. Now, that's second only to John Elway in the Pac-10. Elway finished with 77. Musgrave with 60, the only other uh, quarterback ever in Pac-10 uh, history to complete at least 60 touchdown passes in a career. And the most valuable player in the game. His stock may have gone up in the eyes of the NFL scouts. He made some Joe Montana-like plays. I don't want to compare him to Joe Montana yet, but he did step up and out of trouble and made some good plays. And with better than 300 yards in pass, Musgrave now number three all-time in career passing yardage in the Pac-10 as well. But it'll go down as a loss. The Ducks will finish 8-4 and four this season. Colorado State wins the Freedom Bowl 32-31, the final score. Thanks for being with us, and good night from Anaheim. See you later.